Hey there everybody, Red X Parasite here, and welcome back to Let's Play Metroid Dread. In the last episode, I messed up. <laughs> I don't know exactly what went wrong, but uh, ended up in a part of Gavaran that it's not supposed to be in. That's what happens when you sequence break. And uh, now we're taking a detour. Uh, the good news is that we will be able to get back to where <laughs> we're supposed to be. But it will take a minute or two to get there. I apologize if my voice sounds bad. <laughs> it feels bad. I have this bad tendency of doing that, like, when I really want to record a lot uh, or something in a given day. Oops. Sure, that'll work. <laughs> so, uh, we're coming over here on the left side because this is actually the only way that we can get back. I did... Oop. I did test this out earlier just to make sure that it was indeed possible. And the good news, it is. <laughs> so... Actually, you know what? This, this won't take as long as I probably feel like it will. I guess the uh, video will serve as proof of that. So we need to go up here. I'm just gonna tank that damage. And then uh, we'll just grapple here. And uh, this is where we're supposed to be. So we've got a boss here. No, normally you're supposed to fight this after getting the spin jump, or spin boost. That is definitely the right name for it. So you can see, I actually teleported when I first jumped there, because the game expects you to spawn in from uh, the ceiling. <laughs> That's a fun little glitch that we got, because, you know, once again, I sequence play. <laughs> Not much more difficult than the original one, and of course, as soon as I say that, I mess up the uh, counter. There we go. Okay. Take two. <laughs> Pretty sure there's no penalty for just mashing the counter button, so... If you really want to not mess these up, then just do that. <laughs> and it'll make your life uh, much easier. So, learn my lesson, we'll open up that door. But we are actually heading to the right now. We've got another elevator here. Apologies for not saying anything during that. I was updating something on my notes. We're back here in Ferenia. And this time we're actually going to get to explore for once. Oh. I was I was totally prepared for that. I have to double check and make sure that I'm going in the right direction. I'm pretty sure I am. Oh, you know what? There's totally a thing here that I wanted to get. We should be able to get it from here. Nope, just barely. You know what? I'll get rid of you. No, you're not supposed to do that. Here. It should be possible to get the speed boost charge from this, just barely. And then I mess up the second part. You have no idea how long it took me to figure that out on my first playthrough. Because th that's, you know, one of the more advanced speed booster puzzles. You have to do uh, a number of different steps there. Including sliding into the tunnel, charging it after doing that. Uh, then going back and then 
you know, I'm just sparking. Alright, let me just check my notes, make sure I'm not doing anything out of the ordinary. I, th I think we're good to move on here, and we've got uh, Adam conversation. <laughs> it's been, been a little while. We've had one of those. Uploading data. This area, Frenia, appears to have been a sanctuary. The Makin conducted ceremonies and rituals here. Now, it all lies in ruin. It was likely destroyed in the chaos following the X's arrival. That would match what Quiet Rogue said. They have turned it into a hive. I have also detected the presence of an unusually powerful axe. Recall that the Emmy in this area could see through terrain and stun targets with an electric shock. My sensors indicate this Emmy has been reactivated. We can assume that Raven Beat is behind this too. Make good use of the Phantom Cloak and you should have nothing to fear. Be careful, Samus. I have no fears, Purple Emmy. I have one fear. <laughs> I mean, I would say it's not as bad, but um, I also do not have uh, a certain suit, which makes it better. Uh, let's see. Tunnel outside of the Emmy zone. Well, this is the Emmy zone, so let's see. Is it over here? Nope. Oh my goodness. Uh, you know, friendly reminder that I'm playing on hard. <laughs> that was a uh, very needed red X parasite. Just helping myself out. Oh, well, I can't do that one right now. What? What were my notes? Oh, it's on the other side. I'm dumb. <laughs> I promise I practiced this. It's just been, you know, far too long. Oh, lovely. It's seen me already. <laughs> so, lots of underwater uh, in this Emmy section here. If you recall, Adam gave us a note way back in Brenia that uh, Grapple Beam can help us move underwater, and it certainly proves useful there. Play it safe with these guys. Don't want to take any more damage than absolutely necessary. I do not want to dawdle here. Like the blue Emmy, uh, purple loves seeing you from really far away. The good thing is that it has a terrible memory, so it will not see you, uh, I don't know why I'm waiting to ride that. <laughs> um, it'll forget about you really quickly, so. That part is certainly nice. So here's the energy part that I was <laughs> thinking about. And there's also a missile right around here as well. So this area is really cool. So we're inside this, you know, big tower and you can see you're on the outside of it. So it's really, really done uh, background work there. And, well, you know what that means. It means we've got a boss here. And cool, I got the Shrine Slug on it. Pretty important because that just took off half of its health. Nope. This is going real well. And th th this is why you want to uh, get the Shine Spark, because... Yeah, that can happen. Oh, boy. <laughs> so that was SQ. It is simultaneously one of the hardest bosses in the game, if you are not if you don't sequence break and also the easiest <laughs> so obviously you know getting the shrine spark taking off after the self 
very nice to do. Okay, that's not counterable. Oh boy, that was that was stressful. Considering that you know, that one attack did uh pretty sure it's over four energy tanks. Well, at least I only died once. <laughs> we get the storm missile for beating it. Lock up, lock on up to five targets and fires a barrage of guided micro missiles. Hold R to begin charging. Once charged, a yellow laser sight will appear. Use this laser sight to designate up to five targets. After doing so, press Y to fire a barrage of micro-missiles. Consumes three units of missile ammo per target. So for a maximum of 15. Samus can use these to attack multiple lock-on points at once. They are also effective against enemies cloaked in electrical energy. In addition, they can just trigger storm missile boxes. So a specific kind of lock. We just got the, uh, the key for it. And of course, they give you electrical enemies right off the bat. So, I'm definitely going to take this recharge point here. <laughs> it's uh, sorely needed. And here's our first of the blocks. These can be a bit finicky at times, even with, you know, the proper storm missile. And also, it, it, it is not possible to, uh... One second. Trying to focus on movement and talking at the same time. <laughs> it is not possible to hit them without the, uh, storm missile, in case you're curious. Nope. That was a miss. Did not get the last one there. So, it's another case where I'm going to charge a shark spark going into this room and I messed up the thing, so we're doing this fight legit. We've got more cho ro eh? Robot Chosen Warriors. I really cannot think. <laughs> Game does not afford me the time to do so. Yeah, so if you can get them like on the same platform together, that's great. Okay, I got one of them down. That'll make this a lot easier. I was honestly expecting that to be worse. Just given how the SQ fight went. I think I'm just having flashbacks to uh, my dread mode run. That's, that's probably what's going on here. Nope. <laughs> See if I can do a fancy thing. That was weird, but actually, you know what? I probably shouldn't because I think I'm going out the left side anyways. <laughs> But hey, we got the space jump, finally. So this is the reason why you can just skip the spin boost, if you really want. Allows Samus to jump repeatedly during a spin jump. Press B at the right time during a spin jump to jump again. So a different thing about this uh, ability in this game is that you can actually use it underwater in this game. You just cannot gain any additional height with it. So you can basically maintain your height. You just can't go any higher. So we'll, we'll follow the game's prescribed uh, way out. So we're going to get a demonstration of that here. So there's some subtle design language in the background there, those uh, 
flashing lights uh, are there to indicate that you uh, are supposed to use the space jump there. Oop. Oh, well, that's not <laughs> going to work. Uh, that's generally why I leave that enemy on the left alive, because you can freeze it and use it as a platform. And, oh boy, this, this went real south real fast. <laughs> Okay. Nope, that's not it. Nope. Wow, okay. I need to get my fingers to do what my brain wants them to. <laughs> Believe it or not, there is something specific I'm trying to do, and that would be it. And now we have to get back to it before the ball comes back. Alright, so. Oh, right, I need diffusion for this. There we go. <laughs> Just keep jumping and you'll get it eventually. Just taking out all these enemies so that we don't become a nuisance later. either. I did not want you to reform. Ex-Parasites, stop doing that. I know that's your thing. But, you know, have, have you tried not doing it? Alright, so we've got an elevator here, but I'm actually not going to use it immediately. That, that was unfortunately not exactly what I wanted to do there. Uh, Got pretty close. There we go. <laughs> one more step. So, one cool thing that I just demonstrated with the speed booster there is that uh, you can just run up the diagonal slopes if you have speed. So, you can either, you know, charge a spark at the bottom here and then shine spark up the slope and start running, or you can just jump. And, you know, if, if you can just jump, why not do that? Because it's easier. You do have to charge it at the top of this one, though. Um, and alternatively, you don't have to, like, shine spark up the slope here. You can just charge it, you know, jump up to here and then just spark. That That might be slightly easier than what I did. But uh, it's a speed booster in Dread, so you have options. So now that we have the space jump, we are going to be heading towards Berenia. That, that is where we are supposed to be going next. We'll be doing it by way of Dairon. Sure. I think there is. How 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 did I find that on my first shot? That was actually impressive. I knew, like vaguely, where it was, <laughs> but not precisely. I was actually intending to show off the uh, pulse radar there, but I ended up not needing it. Okay, so. We want to head through the Emmy zone here. Just shine spark through here, and then I want to head down. So that I can grab an expansion on the way. So, yeah, the expansion we want is in here. 
right over there. So you have to go through uh, this room in order to get it. So we needed speed booster for it. Should be enough space here. And we'll grab that. So from here, it's just a straight shot back over to Berenia. Oh look, we just so happen to be exactly in the neighborhood. Ah, dang it, was a little bit too low on that. I, I almost got the cool points. All right, well, I think once we get to Berenia, that's where I'll end the episode. Seems like a good stopping point. So, thank you very much for watching this episode of Let's Play Metroid Dread. I've been Redix Parasite. Signing out. Okay, I, I made it to the fade, just about. <laughs> Could have held it for longer, didn't want to. Alright, well, I'll see you next time. <laughs>